Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So let's jump right into this Kickstarter preview for the lovely Cleocatra. Cleocatra is a game about protecting cats in ancient Egypt. The aim of the game is to score points by grouping cats of different colours together. On your turn you can place a tile, place a rescuer on a tile or score your cats. Once you score an investigator blocks the tile from being scored again. The game ends once someone has reached 23 points. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, the theme and the setting of ancient Egypt, it's a fun one and it's one that's familiar and appealing to tons of people. I think if you really like ancient Egypt, you really like ancient Egypt. And then you add cats into this mix and it really makes for a very attractive game for a whole bunch of demographics. Um, and the idea as well of the cats does make it stand out. I can't think of another ancient Egyptian game that, that features them so strongly. Um, apart from that though, this theme of cat rescuing as an activity seems like something a lot of people would enjoy. You know, you can sit down and spend your evening trying to rescue yourself from Cthulhu or from monsters, but who wouldn't love to sit down and rescue some cats for an afternoon? This is definitely a fun game and one that's just a little bit different. Now, similar games to Cleocatra, well, it's both a tactical and a spatial puzzle, so I'm reminded of something like Torres or maybe even Santorini. Thing two, mechanics. Well, at its core, this really is a game about tile placement. To score points, it's up to you to manipulate the tiles and your rescuers to bring together different colors of cats. So clear capture really feels like a very strategic game because you are interacting with so few pieces. It's kind of reminiscent of something like chess or checkers. Um, and in my mind, I think there really are two phases to this game because when you start, you have a stack of tiles from which you can draw and place tiles into the pyramid. Um, but these run out and then you have to continue play only manipulating the ones that are currently on the board. And I think this kind of ups the difficulty level the longer you play and forces you to approach the puzzle differently. Like, I have to admit that this is a very simple puzzle, but it's very well executed. And I found that even after a few plays, I was developing strategies or different ways to approach problems and also trying to outthink my opponent. This is a small game, but it packs a pretty big punch, actually. Thing three on the table. Well, Cleocatra has a pretty small footprint, making it ideal for people who want to play a game that doesn't take up a bunch of space, or for those who want to use it as a travel game too. I think it would really fit that niche rather well. Now, it's pretty all right when you set it up on the table, but not overly impressive. Although the pyramid shapes really do add a lot to visual interest. The rule book is great, and it only takes minutes to set this game up. It takes about 20 minutes for two of us to play, and about 30 minutes with four players. The replayability value is excellent, well, because it's a puzzle game in part, um, and also the advanced mode, which gives the tiles abilities, really enhances this and adds a good bit of depth to gameplay. Thing 4. How does this game look and feel? Well, Cleocatra has actually very few components. It's got the tiles, the little meeples and the tiny cubes. And mine is a preview copy, so final products may differ. But everything I got in my box is definitely very cute and very lovely. I really like the choice of colours and the artwork will definitely make you go, aww. Overall, this is a very small and indeed adorable little game. Thing 5. Is this game actually any good? Well, Cleocatra is everything it appears to be from the outside, which is a lovely little tile placing game. And like all good puzzles, the more you play it, the more strategies you're going to develop. I do think the theme and the artwork brings this game to life a bit, but not entirely out of the abstract games category. It's fun and head scratching to play. I discovered I suffer from a condition called pyramid blindness, where I just literally couldn't see the pyramid shapes amidst all of the tiles. Um, I think if you like that kind of puzzle, visual puzzles, this is definitely gonna be up your street, even if I was truly awful at it. 
I do find I like the best at two players, so you could counter and guess each other's moves, but it still worked very well with four and was definitely kind of a fun adventure. Geocatra has no airs and graces about it. What you see is what you get. Do I think you should have Cleocatra in your collection? Well, if you're looking for something fun, small and fast with the added aww effect, then this is something you should be looking at. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Cleocatra, just fire them off in the comment box below. So tune in again for more quick and informative board game reviews.